Welcome to another video in the Technician License Class Exam Preparation Course. This is video number 12, and it's all about satellites. There are more than 100 amateur radio satellites orbiting the Earth put up by various amateur radio clubs and universities over the years. They're technically known as space stations. Because of the FCC's definition, a space station is any amateur station located 50 kilometers or more above the Earth's surface. Making contacts through a satellite is fun. These contacts are very short as a satellite pass happens in 10 minutes or less. The typical exchange consists of the call signs and maidenhead grid squares of the two participants in the contact. Most of the amateur radio satellites are in low Earth orbit, circling the globe about every 90 minutes. One satellite has been in moon orbit for several months before crashing onto the moon's surface. Another is in geosynchronous orbit, serving Africa and India, and there are more geosynchronous satellites coming. You'll need to know where in the sky the satellite is currently located. You'll need to know its azimuth, elevation above the horizon during the satellite pass, and the frequency the satellite is listening on and the frequency it's transmitting on. All of this information is called the Keplerian elements, named after Johannes Keplerian and his laws of planetary motion. There is still some atmosphere in low Earth orbit which degrades and changes the orbit dynamics of satellites. AMSAT.org is the website for the Amateur Radio and Space Organization that supports amateur radio satellite operations around the world. They raise the money for satellites, assist in the design and engineering, work with various space agencies to arrange launch opportunities, and do an excellent job of educating the public as well as amateur radio operators. When a space agency is preparing to launch its commercial payload, there is often space for small amateur satellites in the payload. Sometimes they need additional weight to balance the payload. They'll offer space to nonprofit organizations and universities at a very low cost who want to get a ride into orbit for an amateur radio satellite. Although there are some very large amateur satellites in orbit, some as large as a refrigerator, most of them launched today are in a form factor called a CubeSat. And you can see it in the upper right of this picture. This form factor allows these satellites to be easily integrated into the ejection launcher that shoves the satellite away from the capsule containing the payload. Satellites usually have small solar panels in addition to onboard batteries, so the batteries can be recharged while the satellite is in sunlight and still be operational when the satellite is shielded by the Earth from the sun. Almost all satellites will have a beacon, which carries the digitized telemetry about the health and welfare of the satellite. They also include some kind of a repeater listening on one frequency and simultaneously transmitting on a different frequency everything it hears on the input frequency. The contacts are made by using the satellite's repeating system. The type of repeater dictates how many simultaneous conversations can take place. The satellite is approaching you at about 17,000 miles an hour and at some point will go away from you at the same velocity. When the satellite is approaching, the radio waves are squished together and thus are at a higher frequency. This means you have to change the listening and transmitting frequencies as the satellite comes toward you and as it departs. This shift in frequency is called a Doppler shift. It's kind of like listening to a car approach and then drive away. The sound shifts downward in frequency when the car passes and goes away from you. Satellites are very low power devices, transmitting only a few milliwatts. You don't need much power to reach the satellite either. Use as low power as possible when making satellite contacts. As mentioned earlier, amateur radio satellites are repeaters, transmitting on one frequency everything heard on a different frequency. 
In order to conserve space on the satellite as well as power, satellites usually transmit, called the downlink, on one frequency in one band. Everything heard on a frequency in a different band called the uplink. A part of the info you need to know about a satellite is the mode, which describes the uplink band and the downlink band. UV or VU are the most popular at the moment. UV meaning transmits uplink on the UHF band, 70 centimeters. The V means that downlink is in the two meter band. The U was just the opposite. Uplink is in the VHF band, downlink is in the UHF band. Although there are some UL satellites that have gone up recently, uplink in the UHF band and downlink in the L band, the gigahertz bands. YouTube has a number of satellite contact videos. There's one linked on this slide. If you'd like to see what a satellite contact looks and sounds like, follow the link. This concludes the video on satellite operations. Please note any questions or concerns to be discussed in the next online session, or you can email them to me at rolandksmith at gmail.com. We'll see you online.